Hey everyone, so I wanted to take some time and answer some of your questions that y'all either message or when we ask for, hey, what's your questions that y'all have been sending us. So let me get started. I literally have a list of 12, I think it is, different questions um, for me to answer that I pieced together for y'all. And they're not like questions I can really, you know, show you with the quince or answer that way in videos like I normally like doing. So let me get answering these. The first one is what happened with my nursing school. Um, I was one semester away from completing nursing school in New Jersey and I ended up breaking my arm with the military and eight, um, fracturing it eight, um, eight times in my elbow and dislocating my shoulder and um, injuring my wrist as well. And of course, that was my right arm, so I ended up missing a semester of nursing school. The following semester I was supposed to start, I had done tons of physical therapy things with my arm, and we found out that we were expecting quintuplets. So I was hoping to finish the nursing school that semester because um, I was about 12 weeks with the quints when it began. The problem was, was I knew that bed rest was going to be coming at some time and my doctors didn't think that that was such a great idea with the rigorous clinicals and everything like that. It ended up being just as well because I did end up on hospital bed rest at 21 weeks and so I wouldn't have been able to complete it anyways. The, so they were going to... Um, let me then complete it that fall. I had everything signed up, ready to rock and roll with that because the quints were due. Um, our 34 week goal mark was July 3rd that we were supposed to have the scheduled C-section and we we're gonna have almost take home babies and everything was gonna be great. And if not, then we would have our baby sooner. So I would have had plenty of time to go back and make sure our babies have NICU, everything taken care of because we were at a specialist in Arizona and then we were going to medically fly um, the quintuplets after they were born um, and discharged from NICU back to New Jersey and I was going to complete my last semester of nursing school. Yes, crazy, but it was going to work out. Just be an insane last semester taking care of five newborn preemie babies and Connor and everything, but we were going to make it work. Well, we ended up, just, um, the military decided to move us to Arizona where we were, where I was on hospital bed rest. And Michael and all of our stuff and everything arrived two days before the quintuplets were born um, at 31 weeks because I had suddenly gained 40 pounds of fluid in four days and got pulmonary edema. So needless to say, we had to deliver pretty quickly with them. And um, there was no way that I could then go and take all these babies back to me to New Jersey as Michael stayed with the military in Arizona or um, leave the babies with him because he had to return to work 11 days postpartum. Um, so they weren't even discharged from NICU then so that wouldn't have worked out either. Plus I was trying to breastfeed and pump and it just wasn't going to work out. Um, so I tried to transfer my credits to a nursing school in Arizona and sadly none of the nursing schools would take them just for liability reasons which I understand but it was still disappointing um, so even though I had all A's all this stuff they wouldn't transfer so then I am now attempting to go back to nursing school in Georgia here and it should be a lot of fun Definitely nervous um, to tackle it with a bunch of kiddos, but I know it'll help us financially in the long run. Emotionally, it'll feel great for me to kind of give back a little bit and just be out in the real world a little bit. Um, I will be working once I get done with the um, nursing school and the NCLEX and everything. I'll be working hopefully night shifts so that way then Michael will work during the daytime and I'll be home with the kids and then I'll work nighttime and he'll be home with the kids. So that way there won't be any need for babysitters, daycares, anything like that. Um, we've always been very hands-on um, with the caretaking with them. So suddenly passing that to somebody else wouldn't really be kind of our family's motto um, or how we do things. Plus it's not really financially a good option for us. And health-wise, um, sicknesses and stuff, it really helped them not be sick as much um, growing up this far. So, yeah, that's it. I'm just, I've applied, and now I'm waiting to hear back. I've... So, question number two. How about the military 
and why we chose to stay in. Um, we get asked all the time um, about that. So Michael, um, he was he's gonna be a career Air Force guy. He's staying in um, for for until they basically kick him out um, from age and or life that um, happens. So he's planning on being a lifer and retiring. Um, I was in until I was 20 weeks pregnant with the quintuplets, and I had to get out. Um, I didn't have to, but I chose to get out um, because us both being deployed at the same time with the little babies wouldn't have worked out too well, and just not knowing their medical needs, how severe everything was going to be, and what my own body would be like um, as far as being able to bounce right back and be able to, you know, run a mile and a half instantly after ha six months after having all these babies and I had no idea. So it was just best for our family for me to get out um, and switch to what they call the inactive um, military. So I was still technically in and it just ended um, for that. And I plan on Hopefully getting, going back in once I complete my nursing degree and I'll be switching over from enlisted to officer as a nurse um, and try to be a flight nurse. So we'll see about that as well. Pretty excited. So in the meantime, in between now and when I get my nursing um, degree done and get my um, become a registered nurse and everything, I'm going to keep working on getting myself healthy and getting our kids healthy and just setting up the rest of our life so that way we're set and then we'll both be doing our jobs around the world and raising these guys. Um, Michael getting out, it wasn't really an option. They don't, just because you're pregnant, the guys can't get out just like how it, um, it is for the women, obviously. It's a little different for the moms. So his decision was pretty much stay in as well as both of us get a lot of pride out of wearing um, the uniform and he gets and especially you know Michael wants to be a part of something bigger and better than just himself and even our family he just wants to give back um, and he's proud like we all are of um, being able to serve because less than one percent of the people in America do so it's um, definitely an honor um, and that's something to look down upon um we've both been you know working on our education he completed his bachelor's the night the before the babies were born yes we moved two days before they were born he literally submitted his last paper um as i was as the um, medical technician was and nurse and stuff was helping me prep for my surgery and c-section the next morning with the quince so it was an exciting and stressful and busy time but I mean we've been able to meet our educational goals we've been able to travel the world yes we've been separated over half of our marriage and relationships but we make it work um we stay connected on a lot of other levels and really cherish when we are together so the kids also adapt well um for the most part and Connor's got to see a lot of cool things so I meet lots of new friends so it's overall a great thing. There's definitely challenges with it, like any um, job, but we make it all work. So it's definitely just our lifestyle. Number three, why do we pick the names we did? Um, I like unique names, and I like names that are alliterative. So like Connor is Connor Clayton. I like the double first initial. Um, it's just... I don't know, I like how it looks whenever I write it. I like how it sounds when we say it. So when we found out we were having all these babies um, after we got over the initial shock, which I still think we're sometimes still a little shocked that we have so many babies, but we had to come up with names for them. And we did decided on the alphabet theme after going around and around about different should we do a theme should we not do a theme what theme should we do um and we involved connor in every step of the process so we finally decided an alphabet theme is what we wanted to do so we did we came up with five um girl names and five boy names one for each letter a b d e and f since we already have a c uh, um and once we found out it was only one boy, Michael picked his favorite of the five boy names, 
and um, Connor got to pick out which girl got which name when he saw them, so because it left four girl names, so he studied them and talked to them and really put a lot of effort into his first big brother job of trying to name these guys. And that was really sweet to watch and um, kind of exciting for us too because it was just like, which one's he going to pick? Um, and his reasonings for picking each of the names and stuff. It was really special. So we also, most of their names um, are the double initial too. So Aurora is Aurora, Arizona. Briella is Briella Briley. Connor is Connor Clayton. Delilah is Delilah Daphne. Elias is Elias Michael, and Felicity is Felicity Fiona, and last but not least, Gigging is Gigging Gunner. Um, we chose, originally, Elias was going to be Elias Elliot, which would have been perfect since our specialist and amazing doctor who was able to get these babies so far, um, Bacon, and me, his last name is Dr., er, is, he is Dr. Elliot, so his last name was Elliot, I was like, oh, it's perfect. But then Michael wanted to um, follow his family's tradition of the grandfather's first name is the second child's middle name. So we did that, followed that tradition, and that was pretty much that. Then, let's see, um, we also get asked why, if we had Allie, why... Um, wish she wasn't the A name and we skipped that. The main reason we did um, that isn't to forget her because she's very much a part of our lives every day even still as a guardian angel. It was more just Connor to ask because if we had skipped A and went with an alphabet theme, um, everywhere we went people would want us to explain what happened with why, don't, why we don't have an A with us. And not that he's ashamed or anything, it's just kind of sad that you don't want to have to always tell just random strangers and things were what happened to your baby sister um Allie we lost her at just before 24 weeks gestation and it was really hard on all of the three of us and our entire families and friends so he doesn't always want to have to just explain that to the random person who's just being nosy on the street so we ended up respecting of course his wishes and came up with an A name which worked out because I always loved the name Aurora so that was uh, how we named our kids. Um, let's see, next question is, how do we prepare for the quince and where do we get their clothes and everything from? Um, we prepared for the quince after, the, after we kind of freaked out a bit. Michael and I um, bought their car seats, their strollers, everything um, from during like the great trade-in event or whatever at Babies R Us, so we got the 25% off coupons and got all their car seats and strollers there. Then we also, um, let's see. car seats and strollers came from there for their initial stuff. The, our runabout, we're actually the third Quint family, or second Quint family to have it, but the family before the other Quint family was a quadruplet family who also had a bonus baby. So, um, we're excited that whenever we're done with that, it's kind of one of those bittersweet things, but we're excited to pass it on. It's just kind of bittersweet because you're sad that your little babies are now big um, and don't need it. But, um, that was at least how we felt with the quintuplet feeding table when I passed that on, so I have a feeling this is going to be the same. But um, anyways, so that we um, Greyhound bust, um, paid to Greyhound bust it um, from Ohio, where the other quintuplet family lives, to Arizona. Um, it was the cheapest, and it was kind of crazy sounding because I didn't even know that it was Greyhound ship stuff other than just being a bus company. So we had that from them. Um, clothes, I normally try to stock up on the season or next size up or this next season up or whatever we'll need um, when I find it on clearance and stuff and we keep it in bins. Um, their initial clothes, a lot of them were donated from other spouses from our base in New Jersey, which was really, really awesome um, that we were able to have so much stuff just donated from the community around us um, on base there because um, kids don't care about if it's hand-me-downs. They don't, if it's clean and they're uh, and in good shape, it works. Um, and we were super grateful for that because financially that saved us so much money. 
The only downside was when we moved unexpectedly from New Jersey to Arizona, um, we get charged a uh, pound or a dollar per pound over your weight allowance and Michael's weight allowance is for maybe a husband, a wife, and maybe one child. So needless to say, we were 10,000 pounds overweight since we were all prepped up there with the bassinets, the, the, the pack and plays, the clothes, the everything. So it all worked out though and that's basically how we just keep uh, trying to go this um make sure that where we stock so that way whenever they outgrow their clothes we can go right to the next um bin and not be paying full price because we're scurrying around at the store trying to find the next size and of course whenever you're looking for something it's not going to be on clearance so we just plan ahead a bit on that all right so the quints are still down for a nap and mr gideon's down here he's hanging out hey bubba where are you there you are, peeking around the table. That's you. That's you. So, hey. anyways, he's gonna join us for the rest of the Q and A sessions. So, yeah. Um, how? Let's see. Next question. What do you um do for mom time? Um, Michael and I have never went on any sort of vacation since all the kids were born without either all of us going um the kids you know they go on beach vacation with us they go we've traveled across the country multiple times um with them and sightseeing and done all sorts of stuff hey buddy and so we've uh we just include that's us we're not gonna go on a vacation right now um and leave our kids not with us we'll have tons of time for that when these guys are older and decide that we're no longer cool to hang out with they got their own lives to live and dreams to make we will then go and travel and do all of that fun stuff um but for now our vacations are family vacations so and usually it was involving going and seeing family because of being in the military you're not by your family and friends so normally that's where the bulk of our vacations go we go somewhere fun that we can include kind of the family visiting um in it so we'll eventually go somewhere that's not kid there but in the meantime uh, my main mom time is i like going for either pedicure or a massage i try at least once a month um there's definitely um especially like right after we moved um there was definitely a time um, up until really just a few months ago when my mom moved to the area that I was really able to start even getting some mom time. Um, it had been, yeah, over two years um, since I was regularly able to um, get some me time. So it was definitely needed. Um, so now I try and go for either a pedicure or a massage um, once a month. Some months it doesn't happen, some months it does, but that's my goal is to at least have that little bit of relaxing for just mom for an hour um, once a month. <laughs> As you can hear, getting this playing at my feet right now. So he's liking my toenail polish. Anyway, so, so we got that. Um, I love working out. It was something before the kids, I would work out four or five times a day. I'd go before work, after work, at lunch, and I was pretty toned. I wasn't, you know, I was just strong, just weightlifting a lot and doing Zumba all the time and running, just trying to stay as active as I could. So when I got pregnant with them, and that's actually how I realized that some, maybe something wasn't quite right or whatever it was because I was getting really tired doing my workouts really fast with these guys in the pregnancy and I didn't quite understand what was happening like yeah I'm pregnant but it's just one kid what's wrong only then once we found out it was twins and I was like man that explains if that two kids does this to you and little did I know that five kids make you have to stop doing Zumba at eight weeks because you're just too out of breath and exhausted especially with working so um but yeah, so I've been, now that my mom's in the area and stuff and able to help out um, a little bit here and there, I've, or a little bit more here and there, I was able to start working out more regularly, which is really good. Um, otherwise, I would normally just involve the kids in my workouts and 
shoot for as best as I can. Some days they cooperate and it's really productive and then other days it's not so much, but we just try every day and it's good for them to just see mom trying her best to be healthy. Um, our diet's pretty healthy usually, especially the kids' diet. Um, we meal prep and plan and do all that stuff. So they still get treats and stuff. Yeah. I mean, especially over the age of two now, I'm starting to let them have a little more um, treats here and there. But for the most part, fruits, veggies, whole grains, milk, water, no juice, nothing crazy. So try to limit sweets and I don't know. They don't eat anything that's just normal white carbs. So wake each other up? No. They um, are so used to each other's sounds, noises, uh, crying. They just kind of don't even pay attention. Even as little babies, they just wouldn't. Plus, you got to think these guys were used to the naked you sound. So it was loud in there. Like, they keep it as quiet as they can for little babies between... But between um, machines beeping, um, people running with crash carts all the time to different rooms, different things, the ventilators, they got used to a lot of noise pretty quick um, that full-term babies don't have to deal with. So they did good with that. Um, yeah, so we didn't really have to walk around being quiet or anything, which was good. They just were so used to each other, and they've always shared a room with the, all five have always shared a room or an area together. So... They don't know anything different, but sleeping with all of their friends. All right, next question. How do we um, how do we train them to behave when, when I'm out with them? And how do they act at other people's houses and in other people's vehicles? Well, they've never really been in anyone else's vehicle because we have a 15-passenger van. And I don't know anyone else who that's their regular family car. So, um, But they've only been in our vehicles. But... They act great in the car. They love it. Um, they're starting to occasionally, you know, fight getting in the car seat, but usually that's just because they were having fun at whatever activity we were and they didn't want to leave quite yet. Or um, since they don't have assigned seats in the van, they wanted somebody else's seat. Um, but it's a first come, first serve there because they easily um, adjust the straps. So all I got to do is just barely pull up one um, strap and it adjusts to fit the child perfectly. So... We haven't had to, other than Gideon's, um, assigned seats, so he's looking up at me. Yep, other than you, Gigi. <laughs> so, that's that. Um, at people's houses, they act really, really great. Um, they don't touch their stuff. They don't, um, if they even go to, I just, you know, say whatever their name is. Don't touch, only look, and that should be, that's usually the end of it. Um, they like being out and about though for sure so um i'm been taking them out almost daily since they came home from nick use at first it was only to doctor's appointments or to visit the other um children in nick U, but it was still a daily outing for them so they have been used to being on the move um and literally they've moved three times in their first two years of life so we just are used to, they're just used to being out. They know what is expected of them. And normally they're pretty good. We occasionally get a temper tantrum when out, but usually temper tantrums are at home. And that's where a lot of their crazier behavior happens is at home because they're just in their comfort zone. So otherwise they like being out. So I'd rather them act like angels when we're out and versus at home and being terrors when we're out. So, yeah, taking these guys to restaurants alone, to appointments alone, to the mall, wherever, um, on vacations alone with them isn't too, too terrible because they just know how to behave because that's what they are used to doing. So um, it normally takes a little bit more work for me um, when I take one out at a time or two out at a time because they're used to being together so it takes them a while to get out of their shell so I got to work a little bit harder on that just to get them comfortable with just hey it's only you right now you don't have that security blanket of the other quince right there so other than that um, I just am consistent with them I'll is home from work but with him traveling so much and working long shifts and stuff most of the time he's home they're sleeping so when he is home so that being said, they're just staying consistent. 
hey. is key. On a routine is key, and a schedule is key. Hey. They know what to expect, when to expect it kind of thing. Um, they start getting tired at nap time because it's the same time every day. They start getting hungry at eating times because we try to eat lunch at the same time every day. So hey, that means hey, that I have to pack hey, stuff hey, along the way or hey, stop somewhere for, hey, you know, Subway or whatever. Then so be it. Oh, that's their main just trial and error with them and Finding that when, just as soon as I think that I got it all figured out, they'll change the plan and learn it, a new way of handling things or learn a new way they want things done. And now that they're becoming more verbal, they're able to express that to me. So um, we just are constantly adapting to them. And one kid or eight, seven kids, just consistency is key. Um, that way they know what to expect. It's not a, they know what's a joking thing or, oh, I can get away with this and mom's not going to really care versus, you know, trying to run away or something in a parking lot, which is a big time no or things like that. So just stay consistent and keep trying with them because every time you go out, it does get a little easier. If you want to know anything else, go ahead and just let me know and otherwise we're just got a bunch of different stuff happening for y'all and we will talk to y'all later bye